little bit different of a day. Um, see the arrival of the first Kabuha tractor now, it's only a demonstration from FGS and Roddy's after coming up here with the, the big Scania there and after dropping her off. I see another one on board here as well. Where's that one heading? That one's going to have to do another man until there. He's going to try it up with Oh, he's going to try it. So yeah, we've decided to take this M7153, the power shift model, as far as we know, we're going to get off the, the lorry here and uh, take the spin there. But the minute there, we're going to take it off, we're going to have a look around it and uh, see how we go. They're going well, are they? It's a new enough dealership, FGS, isn't it? Yeah, it's, they were new to the, to the tractors. Yeah. We come on a good few years yeah. with the construction and the things. But the tractors are new to us. Yeah. So we're on a learning purpose. Yeah, well, I suppose you don't see too many <coughs> Kaboha tractors in the country. Um, definitely, it's a huge dealership and they're very, very, very big company in the fairness, but they probably just haven't broken into the Irish market yet. So we're going to take this one off. We'll give it a spin. I don't know how we're going to do it yet, whether we go into a, a, a slurry tank or do something with it, but we do something with it on the road and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll demonstrate it for, for the lads here and maybe do a preview on it as well. So we're going to head on now. So I'm Shawnee and the trailer behind me. Um, so this looks like the arm, so I've done fully lifted it up. Presumably it's a hydraulics. And they're click it to that's my pitch. So the two hands here but I'll pull. Yeah, theory number of that there so much. Yeah, there. Pitch rod, arms up. Um, down. Sorry, sorry. Back at home works anyways. <laughs> and we're finally ready to go. Ah, oh, started in the, the highest gear. Good man, Carl. A1 neutral. Off you go, Paddy. <coughs> now, trying to get this yoke into gear. It's very, it is loud now. By Sam. 
Here to... It got an awkward thumbs up there, so we're, we're okay. <laughs> He's smiling now. What are you saying? What are you saying? Oh, oh mind your head, you fucking goose, yeah! <laughs> the mirrors are shite all together. <laughs> so, we're just here in the Kubota now. Um, we're putting it on the dump trailer and bringing it to the farm that we've been draining for the last few days. So we just have a bit of cleaning up to do. That's one thing about the hitch actually, it's great view. I do actually enjoy the shape of it, the orange uh, colour, but the rims, I don't know, they're orange as well, but this looks a bit too orange or silver maybe. thing that drove me and Eamon mad is you one beacon in this corner and one in the back corner. So like, they're not two at the front, they're not two at the back, just one in a corner. And I know it just doesn't look right. Here we are in the E6 now, 46k. And uh, fair control. The steering wheel as well feels so flimsy like it feels like you can nearly just crack it in if you want to. Um, it's not really in it compared to like your well, I know we have the Ultimate Edition John Deere with the leather steering wheel. Um, just a bit thicker, like probably old hand, probably around it. And then what caught me out at the start was to put the tractor to neutral, you to push, push the neutral up the back, saying the John Deere's are case, you just have to, if you leave it in the same position, it will automatically go into park or neutral for its own sake, save the purpose. Screen actually, it's a seven inch screen, and I haven't really got a good look at it um, to see exactly what's on it. And I won't be doing it now either. So, this tractor is actually fairly high spec. You have your front linkage, you have your double acting spool valve, you have, uh, you have your front suspension, you have your air brakes now, and there's different fittings for what we want, so we can't use them in it. Um, full LED package. 7 inch screen as I said um, in a hand joystick or whatever you want to call it it's a little bit I don't know you can't grasp your hand around like your hands like this on it press a button the top rather than putting it around it probably needs to be changed a little bit now maybe if you're not used to it maybe that's because I'm not used to it um, I just don't pick me like that you can also have your other joystick there for a front loader or hydraulics now it, uh, it doesn't have brackets for your front loader but if it did have it that's a nice choice to hold and you have your two buttons there uh, to hold and it's actually reasonably comfortable uh, to get the front weight well as your PTO speeds here then you have your PTO on here then you kind of have to get in between the two joysticks to press the PTO uh, what else do you have all the other buttons here are very self-explanatory, so you can forward and drive, and diff, um, you can set down your revs, the presets. Well, this is your radio over here with your air con, so it should be turned on to and it's getting a little bit steamy. And then you have this side, you not a whole lot of your charger, cup holder, seat. So I'm just going to stick on my old four wheel drive. Here's the remote you can see there with the drone, the beacons. Like, why? Why do it? Alan Clark now in. He's going to actually drive it today. I'm not going to do much. I'm literally going to leave now and go back to the yard and leave the men at it. Alan and John, who seem to be the cleaning up men, just like 
proper gear here. Now I think you can set it. Jeez. Right, where are we going? This one. I think you can set it up automatic that it changed the gears itself. Take her handy up the hill now and see how she goes. Oh, the dip is on already. No, I know the last time Alan Clark got her stuck. No, so. no, Alan actually done all right. Uh, go, on, well, yeah, no. go on, go on. Oh God, she's dying there a bit. In fairness to it now, for a fourth in that. Oh, we got her up. Down the gear, down the gear, down the gear. She's B3, she's B3. 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 What are we in here? B3, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, she wants to go on. There is some it, traction yeah. in this thing, I have to say. Look at her go, look. Absolutely walking away with the big dumb fella behind us, yeah. <laughs> go on, let's get another one into you. So, FB6, whatever that means, but we're absolutely Well, that's flying. forward, and then your B5 is there. Is that it? Well, that wasn't as fun as I thought, no. No, no, I did no. not think he was going to do that. See, that's the difference between an experienced driver that's and the young bull. That's the difference between the old bull and the young bull. Back here now. Actually, what's this? Yeah. So we're just going to get a little review from Paul here because he will be the one that he's more experienced in tractor driving and how she feels and all that. So we let him take it away there. Yeah, I have to say, like from a uh, when you sit into it, you've great vision. That's the first thing that kind of I see. You have a big front window there, two big kind of side panoramic doors there. You've no no brake. It's a full glass, and you've very good vision out the back. So from a viewpoint of, of uh, you can see you can see out, and it's good and airy. Even if another kind of a sunroof up here, this thing now I don't know, just wouldn't be mad on the sun visor here. It's a little bit big. But uh, it does fold back out of the way, and you have you have great accessibility up. Maybe for a loader, ideal tractor maybe for a loader, because you can see right up there into the sky. If you had a loader on it. Um, with the, the functions on the steering wheel, yeah, forward reverse on your left, like most tractors, possibly could do have been changed with maybe this one. I'd rather see this on top, because your your more natural instinct is have you at the top of the steering wheel on your forward reverse, and either have the indicator maybe on this side which would be probably make more sense but yeah nice layout here on on the dash the lights are all in front of you again nothing wrong with here they possibly could have those maybe in the screen and have something else there um <clears throat> but yeah look around it here you've yeah, got air vents um key does stick out a little bit if you were using the right hand door, even though I don't know how you get out, but if you were using it, it would be probably the first thing that would get get uh, get stuck on your knees. So maybe I think now at this stage, we're all manufacturers the keys should really be up in the pillar post, either behind you here um, rather than down there. I think that that thing that day is gone. 
Uh, going back to controls here on the, the multi controller, again, this is a power shift model, so you have a range select here with this button, which you can go up from up through the ranges. How do I actually get to that car? It's back here, is it? Yeah, so there's the ranges there, so it's forward and, and reverse on it. And then you have the ranges here, you can change the ranges by pressing that, this button and pushing it forward. But again, it's, it's nice, it fits nice. Now, I have a big hand, so I probably would like it a little bit bigger, but it still has all the functions, your forward, reverse, um, maybe forward, right, maybe something else could be there uh, as well as a neutral button is here. I'd rather see probably a neutral button here with it as well. So, uh, and then I uh, have, oh, have to go back to the right uh, give it back. So, we're not seeing it. See what you think here now. See, that's I'm after hitting the indicator there. <laughs> So another little handy function here, and it was just a um, salesman pointed out to me. Uh, we have the barcode here, we can scan, um, it's on the pillar there, we can scan it and actually it'll give you all your um, instruction manual will, co will come up in the phone. So you have all the things there, rather than rooting through a, um, a manual operator manual there, you have all that information on your phone, so you can Google it there at night time when you're nothing else to do, or having a cup of tea. Anything else then, we will move on to uh, yeah, the pillars, the bare pillars, the steel pillars. Just not quite so sure whether they should have a little bit of padding on them, just to give it a little bit more luxurious feel to it. Um, look, it's not bad, it still looks, looks the part, but maybe something like that would add to it. So, from myself and Paul here, we just want to thank both uh, the lads for sending out the tractor. And I've had good fun with the last few days, and so has Paul. So Paul. Tried to get them stuck, didn't really work. Thanks to Kavota and thanks for watching. So from everyone here in Finnegan's Farm, see you soon.